Hi boys and girls, uh, we're going to do another art lesson today. I just got finished listening to Miss Verhi read the story about Busy Miss Lizzie, who is such a cute little uh, bumblebee. And the moral of the story I just love so much, it was about taking time to stop and smell the flowers. And today I thought it would be really fun if we did a landscape drawing and just did some crazy wildflowers. All right, I'm going to show you some different ways that we can draw different types of uh, flowers. Now, the first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take your paper and we're going to turn it so that it is going horizontal. Now, remember, horizontal is when our paper is going from long way side to side. And this is a great way to turn your paper anytime you're drawing a picture of something outside because it gives you more space uh, for your ground and for, for uh, things like that. So the first thing we're gonna do, after we get our paper uh, turned horizontal, we're going to put in our horizon line, okay? Or our ground line. This is just the line that shows our eye what part is going to be the ground and what part is going to be the sky or up above the ground, okay? Now, it doesn't have to be straight. See how lumpy bumpy my line is? That's perfectly fine because the ground's not straight, okay? So it looks more real if your, if your uh, ground line isn't perfectly straight, all right? Now, I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna show you a few different ways that we can draw flowers and you can practice doing these. You can figure out which ones you like best you can mix them up way, the way that I'm going to. It's totally up to you. This is gonna be your flower garden, all right? So I'm gonna start out, um, I'm gonna make one sort of like the flowers that uh, were in Busy Miss Lizzie. I'm gonna draw a line going up and kind of over a little bit. I'm not gonna draw them just straight up and down. When, they're, when our flowers are kind of leaning back and forth, it makes it look like they're blowing in the wind. It makes it look a little bit more real. All right, so for in the, uh, the flowers in the story, these were kind of imaginary looking flowers. They didn't really look like a real flower. The center of them had this uh, spiral. So remember a spiral is sort of like a circle, but instead of closing, it just keeps getting smaller and smaller as it goes around, all right? So, and then going around this, this spiraling center, it had just some wavy lines like the flower petals. So this is a really cute design for a flower, but it doesn't really look like a real flower, and that's okay, all right, because with our art, we can make things that look more imaginary. Remember, in art, we call that abstract. It looks more abstract. All right, and I'm going to add some leaves to my flowers. I'm going to do some lines going up, and then a curve coming back down, and I can do that on either side here up and back down. Now, I know out in my yard right now there aren't just a lot of flowers but there's starting to be lots of green things that are growing where there may be flowers later on. So I'm going to add just a few. I'm going to kind of curve the other way here. I've got a straight line going up and this time I'm just going to make like um, just some greenery growing up, some little leaves. So I'm going to just do a little round shape at the top and then I'm gonna have that come all the way down like that, just kind of back and forth. Looks sort of like, um, like hearts going down this line here. Just little, little leaves growing on the vine, maybe a flower later on, maybe not, all right? So another, oh, I've got these all in my yard. I bet you've seen these before. And they're not really flowers. They're more of a weed. Mm -hmm. But they're real pretty. So I'm going to draw a, uh, a dandelion puff. Those are the little fluffy uh, white. You blow them and make a wish. All right. It goes up. And then for this, that's the stem. And then up at the top of it, I'm going to start by making like a letter X. Okay. And then I'm going to just draw some more lines going through it. So it's going to look kind of like I'm making a, like a star, all right? And I can do a few more, all right? So it looks sort of like a, like a pop of fireworks or a star or something like that. And then on the end of each of these, I'm going to make a little V, 
going around. All right, and I can do some more of those little V's on the inside and make it look like my little dandelion puff is really, really fluffy. Okay, all right, so another way we can draw a flower is to draw um, we can do a U shape like that, and then we can do a little like a zigzaggy line across the top. All right, you can do them like that. Uh, they sort of look like the little tulips that we see sometimes around uh, in spring and around Easter, or that could be just like the opening bud of the flower, and then I could do like some some petals coming out of it, just some U shapes. I'm going to kind of bring them around a little bit like that. I'm going to add another line and make my stem a little bit bigger. All right. And add some, some leaves to this flower as well. All right. Uh, now, this kind of looks like I'm looking at the bottom of the flower. Another way you could do this is like you're looking more from the top of the flower. So at the top of the stem here, you can do a straight line across like that, and then a little bitty rainbow line. All right. And then instead of drawing the U-shapes going up, we can draw them coming down and around. And it looks like we're looking kind of down onto the flower and seeing it from a different point of view. Add some leaves. All right, uh, maybe I'm going to do another big, tall, kind of imaginary. I love this spiral line. I'm going to do a real tall one with a spiral center in it. And I'm going to give it petals that kind of go around, sort of like those sunflowers that we did. And add some lines in the middle of them to give it some, some texture, make those leaves look a little bit more uh, three-dimensional. leaves coming down here. Maybe some more, just the little, the little greenery growing. Let's make it look like a really wild little garden area with lots of, lots of green things growing. And you can add some, some little zigzaggy lines spiking up here and there to look like grass. Now I'm doing all this with a black marker. You can draw it with a pencil. It is up to you what you want to use. I'm going to do another little short flower over here. And let's see. I'm going to do kind of that U shape here. Thinking about those, those tulip flowers. It's kind of like a bowl almost. All right. And you can just keep adding them in. Fill up your page. Now on the um, on Google Classroom, if you go to that and get set up, I'm gonna upload some pictures that show different ways you can draw flowers kind of step by step. And so I'm just making kind of rectangles going around in layers here. We call this doodling. Just drawing for fun, not worrying if it looks perfect, just kind of practicing different types of lines and figuring out ways that we like to do them. All right, but I'm going to upload some different little pages that show step by step how you can draw flowers and that's a way that you can practice it. Now something else that's fun 
Um, if you happen to have some markers, um, I've got some here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the markers and just as a fun way to add some color, you can, I'm going to go around and kind of outline my flower here. And then you can, if you have just a brush, a soft brush, and a little bit of water, it's just some plain water here. And a lot of times your markers will kind of blend on your paper and it looks almost like watercolor paint. And I'm not really sure if this is going to show up good. It's a soft color. You're not going to see uh, a really heavy, uh, thick kind of looking paint. But it's, uh, it's a pretty soft watercolor. And depending on what kind of markers you have, I've got, these are just regular old Crayola markers. Um, depending on what kind of markers you have, and also some paper. Uh, does this better than other types of paper does. So if you try brushing water over your markers and it doesn't really do much, don't worry about it. Another pretty way to add color is um, just to use crayons or color pencils or you can kind of mix them. You could outline um, your flowers in marker and then color them in in crayon and it would give kind of that same effect. So I'm going to finish adding color to my drawing and then I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. Okay guys, I'm almost finished adding the color to my doodled flower garden. Now the flowers on this side of the page, um, you may not be able to tell it, but with these, I outlined them in a marker and then colored them in with a crayon. So if you're not able to, uh, to do the, the water and have it uh, move your marker around and make it look like paint, try it the other way because it's a very, it looks very much the same. You just get that pretty texture from having um, the dark, darker outline and then lighter color in the center. All right, so um, I'm going down here now. I'm going to paint my grass line, my horizon line, and it's kind of drippy, and I, and I think that's pretty and adds a lot to it. This is this is kind of a messy a messy picture, but that makes it pretty. It looks more like a more like a wild garden that way, more natural looking. Now this flower up here, I really thought this turned out neat. I ended up. Um, since I had gone around and made all those rectangles, um, it ended up being about three layers. So what I did was I, I picked one of my color families. I picked my warm color family. Remember those are red, orange, yellows, pinks, and those colors that are close to each other on the color wheel. And so I did each layer in a different color from that same color family. And I think it just looks really, really pretty the way that red turns into pink and then into orange and then into gold and into yellow. It just looks like those colors are blending together really pretty. Well, no, my flower's dripping on down my page. That's okay. I think that looks pretty too. All right. So, um, this is a really neat activity. Um, this is um, something that I enjoy doing. Now, I'm also going to show you some video we did earlier in the day where um, my boys didn't really want to sit and draw flowers today. They wanted to be outside because it's really sunny pretty day. So we did an outside art activity where we used shadows to help us draw and I'm going to show you some videos from that as well because there's lots of different things that we can do uh, while we're in the house to still be creative and still have fun and still make things that uh, that we enjoy and that other people can see and enjoy as well. Um, guys, thank you so much for sharing all your pictures. I loved all those little bad seeds that have been posted this week. They were all so cute and I'm proud of you for uh, working and trying and practicing and doing your best and I cannot wait to see you again. I love you. I miss you. I hope you have a wonderful day. All right, so we're outside this morning and decided to do some shadow drawings. Uh, we have already, uh, the boys have drawn me while I posed, and we drew Josh, and now it's Brody's turn. All right, so Brody, strike a pose. I know. It's okay? Perfect.
Arms up, freeze. Okay, now Josh, trace him. <laughs> Josh is pretty fast at tracing. All right, he's just using some sidewalk chalk out here on our uh, our little patio area behind our house. And it's about 10 o'clock in the morning, which is a good time for shadow drawing. If you get up around 12 o'clock, the shadows are going to be too short because the sun's overhead. So I'd say between 9 and 10 in the morning is great shadow drawing time. And then probably around two or three. Of course, you want it to be nice and sunny outside while you're doing your shadow drawings. If it's cloudy, you're not going to get a good shadow. And you got to work and move around. Josh, I think you're going to have to come around to the front yeah. and finish that. <laughs> and then once we get finished, we can add details to our drawing. We can just color them in kind of crazy. Um, we can try and make them look realistic. The boys did kind of cartoon type characters. They added facial features. And when they did their poses, they were trying to make it look like we were interacting with each other. So that's fun. Um, some other shadow drawings that, that we did while we were out here. The boys brought some of their toys outside. Okay, so you could do this, you know, without having to have somebody stand and pose for you. They just took some of their favorite items and decided to outline them. And they could move them around. And it's a little bit tricky because... You know, the sidewalk's kind of bumpy, so it doesn't make a nice smooth line. But it's, but it's fun to move and position the toys and draw them from different angles. And then you can look at them and add details and color to them later on. And I think we're going to use these for something else in a little bit. All right, we got our chalk family looking good. Um, it, I changed my pose uh -huh. thing. Because I thought it would be cool if I was like trying to reach out to grab you. Okay. We're doing finger guns at Joshua, and he looks like he's screaming. <laughs> you know. All right. Well. I feel like I'm trying to reach out to grab you to stop me. Well, this is definitely a fun activity, I'm and. Right here, like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> and we can use shadow drawing for lots of different things. 